Hey guys, it's Shara here from Woodshop Diaries, and today I'm sharing a project that got me a little out of my comfort zone. Not only was I working with metal on this project, but it was also my first time using a torch. Don't worry, all went well and nothing caught on fire, but I'm really excited about sharing this modern industrial wall clock because it challenged me to get out of my comfort zone and think outside the box. And it also looks pretty cool hanging on my wall too. So if you're ready to see how I made it, let's get to it, but first, a huge thanks to today's video sponsor, The Home Depot. This video is part of the Prospective Tool Review Program. For this project, you'll need a cool chunk of wood for the middle of the clock, a stick of 3 16 inch by 2 inch steel flat stock, and an eye bolt. You'll also need some scrap 2 by lumber to make the jig to bend the steel. For this, I rated my scrap wood cart for a few boards. After cutting them down to size, I laid them out on my workbench and used an old clock that I had made last year to draw out the circle because I wanted this clock to be the same size as that one. You can use any round rod object to draw out the size clock that you'd like. Then I glue these boards up and let them dry. While the glue was drying, I checked out the chunk of wood that I was going to use for the center of the clock. It was a thick piece of poplar that I found at my local hardwood store. It was a really cool piece, but it had a large crack in the middle. So I taped up the cracks and filled it with some Total Boat 2 to 1 performance epoxy to keep it from bending or breaking. While the epoxy was drying, I moved back to my scrap wood jig. Using my bandsaw, I cut the circle out. It doesn't have to be perfectly round or perfectly full. Basically, we're just going to be bending the flat stock around this circle. Now that the circle was cut out, I moved on to bending the flat stock. At this point in the project, it was really helpful to have a drill and a driver handy as I started to bend this metal. I used the DeWalt Atomic Compact Drill Driver Set for this particular project. The set comes with two batteries, the drill and the driver, and a cute carrying case. And let me tell you, they pack a pretty tough punch for being so small and lightweight. I'll leave a link below for this set if you're interested. First, I use my new DeWalt Atomic 20 Volt Max compact drill to, to drill a starter hole that I can screw the steel to the jig. Once I made sure my screw would fit through the hole, I used the DeWalt Atomic 20 Volt Max compact driver to drive the screw into the wood circle. And now, before moving on, we have an important message from my personal safety manager, my husband, Danny. Are you ready now? First things first, make sure you have a high quality fire extinguisher right on hand. Before starting this project. Before starting this project. Great job, Goo, give a thumbs up. Now that we've got our safety warning behind us, we can move on to the heating and the bending of the flat stock. I used the burns TS-8000 torch kit to help in bending the steel. You can use this torch for soldering, brazing, and even welding, but did you know that it greatly assists in bending hard steel nice and smooth? By the way, at this part of the project, it's really helpful to have two sets of hands, one to roll the circle and one to heat the metal. It's super handy that this torch has a trigger so that I could quickly pull the trigger to heat, then easily just release the trigger to stop the flame and move over to drilling and driving screws to keep the flat stock close to the circle jig. We worked our way around the circle, heating, bending, and attaching as we went. You can see that for this process as well, I also used the DeWalt Atomic Compact Drill and Driver. The heat from the torch really helped to keep the bends on this steel nice and smooth. I attempted to bend it around the jig without the heat first, and if you look really close at the finished clock, you can see where that caused kind of a sharp bend towards the top. I didn't want a lumpy looking circle, so the torch really came in handy for this project to make smoother bends. If you're interested in adding a torch to your shop, I'll leave a link below to this one so you can check it out. Once we got to the end of the circle, I clamped the metal in place and used a hacksaw to cut off the extra, making sure to leave a slight overlap to attach the ends together with an eye bolt. Then I used my DeWalt Atomic Compact Drill to drill two holes into the ends to insert the eye bolt. I loosely placed the eye bolt through these holes, then removed the screws around the ring and took out the jig. It's helpful here to use some clamps to bring the ends close together so that you can fit the eye bolt through both holes. My camera battery died around this point, but once I removed the circle, I used a couple of wrenches to tighten the nuts on the eye bolt to bring the ends together nice and tight. Then I gave it a few coats of black spray paint and brought it back inside the shop. 
I placed the ring on top of my chunk of wood that I was going to use for the center of the clock and traced where to cut it to fit inside. I made sure that everything was nice and centered so that it wouldn't look off balance once I got it finished. I used my bandsaw again to cut along these lines, then gave it a good sanding and test fit it inside the ring. At this point, I noticed that the holes that I had drilled during the bending process didn't line up with where the wood was going, so I marked new holes and drilled them out so that I could attach the wood to the ring with screws. Before attaching it all together, I did give the poplar a nice beeswax finish because it's easier to finish now than it would be once it's already placed inside the ring. Then I placed everything together and attached along the sides with two and a half inch wood screws using my DeWalt Atomic Compact Driver. Now all that's left is inserting the clock mechanism. I found the center of the clock and drilled a hole large enough for the shaft of the clock control to fit through, then marked where I needed to cut it out for it to fit inside. The clock shaft was only about 7 8 inches long, but the wood was about 2 and a half inches thick, so I needed to cut out quite a bit of material for it to fit down into so that the shaft reached the front of the clock face so I could attach the hands. To make quick work of this task, I used my rigid octane 18 volt job max multi-tool with the wood cutting attachment. It worked almost like a power chisel. I just cut out large chunks at a time and kept test fitting the clock mechanism until it was deep enough to attach the nut and the hands on the front side. I've cut this out before with a router on other clocks I've made, but using this multi-tool was way faster, way cleaner, way easier, and way more fun, especially for something this thick. And with its tool-free multi-tool head, it will come in handy for many other tasks around the shop as well. If you're interested in adding one to your shop, I'll leave a link to this multi-tool below if you'd like to check it out. Once I had cut deep enough to get the clock mechanism to the face of the clock, I attached the rest of the kit with the hands on the front side and made sure everything worked well and that the hands didn't touch when they rotated around the clock. Then I moved inside to get ready to hang it. Remember me telling you about my personal safety manager Danny earlier? Well Danny hates when I hang things on the wall. He's always paranoid I'll hit a live wire, which is highly possible because until now I usually use the knock on the wall method to find a stud. But I finally got a stud finder and now there are a lot less test holes in the wall now and it gives Danny extra peace of mind too because not only does this DeWalt 1.5 inch stud finder find studs, but it can also detect live wires inside the wall to help prevent the risk of careless wall hangers like me nicking a live wire when hanging their cool new clock. If you're interested in not getting electrocuted or just leaving a lot fewer holes in your wall when you're hanging things, I'll leave a link below to this cool little stud finder so you can check it out. And at this point, I was able to hang my super cool industrial looking wall clock and take pride in the fact that I finally used a torch in the shop and I didn't catch anything on fire. I feel like being the hot mess that I am, that's a pretty good accomplishment. I was really nervous about this project because I don't do a lot with metal or heat, but now that I've jumped that hurdle, I feel like maybe this is just the beginning of incorporating metal into my projects. Stay tuned to find out. But for now, be sure to check out the links below to see these awesome tools used to make this clock and check out the step-by-step -step tutorial in the blog post link below as well. A huge thanks again to The Home Depot for sponsoring this video and if you enjoyed the project, I'd love if you'd give it a thumbs up below and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on what's coming next. But enough for now, until next time, happy building.